Hey, what's up, shitheads? It's Big Dog here with Shoot the Chit, and today we're gonna be talking all about the Vitalin V3 2.0 folding e-bike you see here. Nice folks over at Vitalin sent this to me to do a review, so we're gonna be going over the specs, features, what components come on this bike. After that, we're gonna go take it on a nice test drive, and I'll let you know, is this thing any good? Is it worth the money? Well, you're gonna have to stay tuned to find out. That's enough small talk. What do you say we go ahead and get right into this review? All right guys, so here we are up in personal with the Vitalin V3 2.0 folding e-bike. Chose the nice white color here, but it is available in four different color options. It's a black, orange, gray, and what I consider the correct option here, this nice white option. And I'll check it out, it's kind of like the Stormtrooper edition. I think this looks really cool. I really like the contrast between the white and the black. So we're starting back here in the rear. This has a 750 watt brushless hub drive motor that has a peak of 1200 watts. It housed in these nice looking mag wheels wrapped up in these CST 20 by 4 inch fat tires. Shimano 7 speed turny derailleur with a 7 speed cassette. This bike has a 48 volt 13 amp hour battery. This works out to be about 625 watt hours. So this bike doesn't have the biggest battery but this is again this is like you're probably going to want to use for like commuting or for shorter trips so this bike is not built to be long range for reference this is what a six foot two rider looks like on the vitalin v3 vitalin claims this fit riders from five four to six five this bike has this nice rear rack has front and rear plastic fenders and guys i don't know if you've been around my channel for a while but i prefer the plastic fenders because they make considerably less noise this bike has a, is equipped with 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes front and rear. This looks more like a traditional mountain bike seat. It's gonna be a little more firm than your uh, typical e-bike seat. Let me give you a quick demonstration on the folding capabilities of this bike here. So there's this latch in the middle. You wanna undo the latch and then the whole bike simply folds in half. And you'll notice here, this folds into a nice compact package. You notice down here at the bottom it has this little sprocket guard here. So if you drop it down, it's not gonna smash your front sprocket. And another level to compact, make this compact even more is you can also fold the handlebars on this bike. So there's another latch on the handlebars and then you can fold it all together. So look how small and compact you can get this bike down to. For traveling purposes, you can put this in the back seat or you can put this in the trunk. This is a pretty compact little bundle here. So that's really nice. And to put it back together, you just simply do the reverse, latch it back up, pull back out your handlebars, and you're ready to rock and roll. Up here in the front, we have a pretty basic front suspension fork. It has your two adjustments here. Right on the right, you have your compression settings. You can either lock it or open it. And on the left, you're gonna have your preload adjustment. One thing I did notice is in order to turn on this bike to power it on, you have to have the key in the battery slot, which is underneath the main tube on the bike. I'm definitely not a fan of that. It just adds an extra layer. That means you have to have the key with you. So anyways, guys, this has a half twist throttle. It has these nice uh, grips here. I like the palm support. It's like got a nice tactile feel to them. It has these Wuxing mechanical disc brake handles. This bike has a nice tail light here. You see it's always on when you turn on the headlight. You turn off the headlight, it turns off and it activates also when you press the brake handle. They feel okay. It has everybody's absolute favorite Shimano seven speed shifter. I swear 90% of e-bikes have the same exact shifter on them. So in order to turn on this bike, you're gonna have to turn the key into the on position and then hold the power button here. And that illuminates your nice color display here. Now this first glance, this is a really nice looking display. It has your battery meter up there, your speedometer, has your pedal assist level demonstrated here. And this has five pedal assist levels. You can toggle your headlight here, pressing headlight button on or off. You can toggle the turn signals here on the left by choosing which direction. I personally like to keep people guessing. I don't want them to know which way I'm going. And it has your horn. That's a pretty nice sounding horn. What do you guys think? So overall, I really like this uh, display here. It has your basic information on it, your tripometer, tap the information button. It's gonna swip, swap you through, odometer, max speed and average speed. So this is a pretty basic display, but it gives you your basic information. The one thing I do like when these displays have, I like it when they have a watt meter that shows you how much wattage you're outputting. And I like it when it shows the voltage instead of the battery bars or in conjunction with the battery bar. This is a really nice looking display. Here you can see the charging port on the side of the bike here it has a nice little weatherproof 
grommet you stick in there. And speaking of charging, this bike has a two amp charger, 13 amp hour battery divided by two is gonna give six and a half hours for a full charge. Well, there you guys have it. There's an overview of the specs and features of the Vitalin V3 2.0. You know, in all my excitement, I almost forgot to mention, as of right now, this is selling for $8.99. This is April, 2024. But I'll put the link to any discounts or coupon codes in the description of this video. But guys, what do you say we go do the fun part and take this out for a ride? Come on guys, let's go. All right, guys, we are out on the Vitalin V3 2.0. And we're gonna start off going through the pedal assist settings. Like always, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right away, I'm in pedal assist one, and man, pedal assist one is super low power. So we're gonna crank it up to two. Looks like pedal assist one goes up to about five miles an hour. Can definitely feel the assist in two. And we're getting up to about 10 miles an hour, 11, 12, still going. Looks like it cuts off around 13 and 12 or 13. Pedal assist three, ooh, feels pretty quick. Pedal assist three, kind of surprised by the amount of power this thing has, to be honest. Pedal assist three, looks like it goes up to about 16 miles an hour. And let's see what pedal assist four has to offer. Pedal assist four, we're just cooking right along here. Pedal assist four, looks like it goes up to about 21 miles an hour. We are in pedal assist five. Oh, not bad. Kind of surprised by the amount of power this bike's putting out. Pedal assist five, we're going 26. 27, wow. So it looks like we're gonna hit our top speed at 28 miles an hour in pedal assist five. So initial impressions with the power, uh, the pedal assist settings feel smooth and I'm kind of surprised with how powerful this bike feels. Sneak peek of the horn in action there. Typically I like to ride in pedal assist three. This is a cadence sensor bike and some of these cadence sensors do not deliver the power very very smoothly but so far this one feels really nice so this is a 20 by 4 inch fat tire bike typically these are a little more maneuverable but on this one you are definitely in a more upright position so i feel i don't want to test how maneuverable this bike is as much as i do with the ones that are a little lower to the ground but it makes sense you know this bike is designed to be more compact and foldable okay here we are in the planks of doom i'm not going to be tempting fate today we're going to take a leisurely leisurely ride through the planks of doom. I call this area the planks of doom because you are surrounded on both sides by blackberry bushes loaded with thorns. And through here, you're on a raised plank section with sections of it being above water. So if you make one false move, guys, not only are you gonna fall into some blackberry bushes and get poked everywhere, you have potentially could fall into the water as well. So, you need to trust the maneuverability of your bike when you go through places like this. Do any other e-bike channels do tests like this? Yeah, I don't think so. Ooh. Here's the sketchiest one. We made it past turn three. We are almost out of the elevated section. Oh, I have to say this bike's making easy work of the planks of doom, guys. I'm actually really surprised so far with how powerful this bike feels and how smooth the uh, power delivery is so wow i'm liking this so far as i ride more and more of these bikes i'm realizing some of these uh cadence systems are just not very good to be honest this one the power kicks in right away and it's a smooth delivery it's not just throwing all the power in at once and like lunging you forward it's nice and smooth so yeah this is a pretty nice bike i can definitely see Getting one of these for maybe your commute to work if you're gonna get on a you know subway train or BART Or if you're gonna have one of these at a campground. This is a nice form factor here This is what a six foot two rider is gonna look like on here and uh, Front fork doesn't feel too bad to be honest. I don't think there's an incredible amount of suspension on here I mean, I don't know how much suspension you're expecting from a folding bike a folding commuter bike But you know so far guys, I'm actually really impressed with the build quality and the overall feel of this bike this bike's definitely growing on me, guys. I don't want to be uh, seem like I'm being overly positive, but for a budget bike, this one feels better than some of the other bikes I reviewed. If you travel a lot, you need to throw this in your car. It would definitely be a good little bike to take on some short excursions. This is my good side over here. So check it out. So far, this bike is making absolutely easy work of all the obstacles that the wetlands have to offer. Granted, it isn't saying much. This isn't exactly a bike park. Mm. 
you know, before I started the whole work from home thing, I commuted to the office every day in San Francisco on BART. And I could definitely see something like this being extremely handy for riding the BART. As a matter of fact, I could ride to the BART station from my house. So I could have eliminated one whole step out of my commute, ride this to the BART station, get on BART, risk being physically assaulted on BART, and then ride from this to the office. So I think this would give plenty of range. I don't, you know, that's the one downside of this bike is a smaller battery, 625 watt hours. But I feel for a lot of average commutes, you know, if your commute's 10 miles total, you're not gonna have any trouble doing that on this bike. Woo. You know, not everyone would be lucky enough to commute through a nice, beautiful park. So a lot of us are gonna have to ride on the road and that's what we're gonna do now. You know, this bike is definitely not a speed demon, but I feel like, uh, you know, I'm in pedal assist three, I'm cruising around 15, 16 miles an hour. No problem, not putting in a ton of effort. If you commute and you want a multi-purpose bike, especially the footprint of how small this one folds up, this would be great to take along with camping trips. So I'm about 4.7 miles in, this thing's still showing five bars. All right, now we're gonna get off the road and we're gonna get back onto the bike trail here. This bike is a nice cruiser, but one thing I wanna point out, something, uh, this seat, is kind of on the stiff side it's not the most comfortable so i'm definitely finding myself shifting my weight around a bit more now typically here's where we take the uh, off-road course here but you know what guys we're on the commuter bike we're taking the path of least resistance today okay i'm gonna crank up the pedal assist here let's do pedal assist five for a bit oh man this bike is surprisingly powerful i'm telling you that i saw another review and the guy only got the 24 I'm at 26, 27. I'm pedaling though, guys. I feel resistance. I don't feel like it's giving me uh, power anymore. There you go, 28. So we were able to hit a top speed of 28 on this bike. So these brakes are 160 millimeter mechanical brakes and they don't really have a ton of bite, but you know what, they stop. Let's see. Yeah, you know, these brakes are not overly impressive, but so far what I do like about them is they work for starters. And unlike other mechanical brakes on a lot of bikes I've tested, these are making no noise. They're not squealing at all. So yes, they're mechanical, but what do you expect? This is a budget bike, but I feel like for the size and weight of this bike, these 160 millimeter mechanical brakes work just fine. Now it's kind of neat. This handlebar stem here is adjustable. So you can raise it and lower it, which I definitely don't recommend doing while you're riding. But so this will accommodate a wide variety of rider sizes. You know, where the seat might be a little uncomfortable, these uh, handlebars are very surprisingly comfortable. Definitely with these wrist supports I have on the grips, nice and comfortable here. Well, believe it or not, guys, we're gonna do the hill test on this bike. And I think it can do it for a variety of reasons. One, I think this bike is geared pretty low. It's not very heavy and it has a surprising amount of power. This thing in the lowest gear, like, I don't know if you can get a sense of, I'm like barely pedaling, but oh. Surprisingly, yeah, this isn't too bad at all. We're just commuting the work up this steep hill, guys. Oh yeah, this is uh, surprisingly making quite easy work of this hill. It's a variety of the gearing and the power, but yeah, no problems at all. Really easy ascent up the, the hill test. And we have made it to the top, guys. We started at the bottom, now we're here. Surprising results. Would not have expected that when I started this test, I'll tell you that much. Still on our way to work out here. You know, I'm starting to notice another thing about this bike too. It's pretty quiet. I mean, as I'm hitting these bumps, I'm hearing a little bit of a rattle. I think it's from the front fender or maybe the shock, but it's not very bad. A lot of these bikes typically have uh, quite a bit of noise as you hit bumps, but this one's fairly quiet. Quiet motor and the suspension is pretty quiet as well, you know, the front fork. You know, normally I would have uh, wrapped this video up already, but you know, it's such a nice day out and I'm just enjoying this ride. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. And, kind of see how far I can get on this bike. So I'm currently at 14 miles and it's showing four bars, consistently riding in pedal assist three. Let's just see how far we can get. All right, a little development in the story. 15.3 miles, I'm at three bars. 
and I can definitely hear the motor sounds a little less enthusiastic going uphill. So I'm starting to experience a drop in power. But we're gonna keep trucking, guys. We'll see how far we can get on this bad boy. Should I get this checked out? All right, big development, guys. We're at 18.5 miles, and we are now officially showing two bars, but with a 625 watt-hour battery, if we get 25 miles, guys, I will call that a success. Let's, I'm gonna keep going, guys. I'll check in with you in a little bit. Well, there you guys have it. This is the Vitalin V3 2.0. I ended up with the final range of 25 miles, and I still have two bars showing on the display. 25 miles, and still got two bars showing. But I figured, you know what, guys, that's enough for this ride. And uh, I think that's pretty acceptable range, especially for a 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery and a nice folding bike. So what do I think of the Vitalin V3? Uh, in one word, surprised. This bike has far exceeded my expectation. This is one of the examples of a company knowing the assignment and absolutely nailing it. I think for this form factor, a folding bike, it's pretty light, it's easy to manage. It's got a very smooth cadence sensor. I really like that uh, this bike is surprisingly capable. I did the hill test climb in this, no problem. The, so I, there's a lot of stuff I really like about this bike. I like the way it looks, the price point. Some of the things I don't like, for starters, this seat. Now I think this seat may have taken a couple of years off the life of my butt. So uh, yeah, first thing I would do is swap out this seat. But honestly, I think for what this is, this bike is awesome. If I still worked in the city, I could take this bike to work and you know, if I felt like doing some sightseeing after work, I could take the, this bike and pretty much go anywhere I wanted to. Uh, I really enjoyed the V3. If you're interested in buying one, use the link in the description of this video. It does help support the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.